And right now joining us on the line, Phil Sheridan of NFL Nation. And Phil, interestingly enough, you would you just wrote about Chris Givens and the Eagles just announced they just signed him. So how about that? Yeah. Well they've uh, you know, got rid of uh, pretty much every other in wide receiver they had, you know, they cut uh, Miles Austin back in December. They cut Riley Cooper on the first day they could, uh, earlier this off season. So they had a bunch of young guys and uh really nobody with any kind of veteran uh presence or experience or, you know, sort of just veteran know how. So uh I have a feeling that's kind of what Doug Peterson's looking for here as a guy that can just kind of help these young guys come along. The young guys are still going to be the future, but um, especially with Nelson Aguilar and Josh Huff not having great seasons last year, uh, you know, having somebody that you can kind of rely on here uh, and help the young guys come along and uh, grow is probably the best move they could make. A lot of our audience probably is not familiar with Chris Givens. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, we you know some people may know Chris Givens. He did play on the Rams with Bradford. He played did play last year with the Baltimore Ravens. But talk a little bit about a guy who you know maybe hasn't gotten a lot of playing time, but he's been around the league for five years now. Yeah, that's the thing. He got to uh, to St. Louis when Bradford was the quarterback there back in 2012, and uh, his rookie year was pretty good. Um, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but he you know he had a better rookie year, for example, than Nelson Aguilar just had for the Eagles in terms of numbers. So, uh, you know, he's kind of a young, promising guy. He has some pretty good speed. And uh, the second year he was there was the year uh, Bradford tore his ACL the first time. And that started the Rams and that whole cycle of backup quarterbacks and not being able to, you know, rely on Bradford or know whether they, whether they could rely on Bradford. And uh, for the next couple of years there, he was, uh, you know, pretty mediocre in terms of numbers. But the Rams offense generally and the quarterback play in particular was not particularly good. So it's hard to judge wide receivers in that situation, I, I think. And then last year he got uh, traded to the uh, Ravens, and um, you know, again, I don't know the exact numbers in front of me, but he, he had a pretty good, uh, pretty good year with Joe Flacco throwing to him. Once he got to Baltimore, his numbers went up again a little bit. Um, a lot of deep balls. Uh, he has, again, has pretty good speed, so his, his uh, yards per catch uh, was pretty high uh, for guys. Had a lot of uh, a lot of production in the NFL. But the hope here is that he was only 26, and uh, with with good speed, and um, you know. The familiarity with Bradford and, and an offense that should uh, should be allow Peterson to kind of focus on a wide receiver here and there. I mean, the one thing about Chip Kelly was everything was about you know running the system the way it was designed, and uh, the, the the ball kind of went you know where the quarterback's progression took him. It wasn't really about having a you know a featured wide receiver. Whereas with uh, with Peterson, uh, as with Andy Reid over the years. You know, when Andy Reid wanted to make a wide receiver, you know, the focus of his offense, like Terrell Owens, for example, or Deshaun Jackson later, and he could do that. And so, you know, I think the hope here would be that you have a mix of a young receiver with some potential and uh, uh, an offense and a coach uh, that kind of want to, you know, get the most out of him. So, again, I don't think it's going to, you know, change the balance of power in the NFC or anything like that, but it's a good solid addition to a team that, you know, really likes veteran, uh, you know, just a veteran presence among its wide receiver core. Do you think the Eagles are done addressing the depth of the wide receiver position? Do you think they should go out and get more? I think they're probably done in terms of free agency. Um, you know, Doug Peterson mentioned uh, last week when we were talking about the various guys that they had signed in free agency that uh, he was asked about wide receivers, and he said, you know, he kind of liked the, the tight ends and wide receivers here. He thinks is enough to be a you know, dynamic offense. Uh, that was the word he used, dynamic. So, um, you know, when you talk about Zach Ertz and Brent Selleck, uh Jordan Matthews, Aguilar, and Josh Huff. You know, you have a group of guys, and now you had Chris Givens to that. You know, you have a group of guys that, that can, you know, run the offense and be pretty efficient. Uh, but Doug, Doug Peterson mentioned in that statement that, you know, well, the draft is coming up and we're going to look there too. So I won't be shocked if they, if they draft wide here, you know, somewhere in the third, fourth round area uh, and try to get somebody that could be productive as well. Um, I think with the, you know, I, 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 I'm working under the assumption that you know Peterson's offense is enough like Andy Reid's, and his way of doing things is, is enough like Andy Reid. That having a little time to uh, you know kind of learn the offense and, and grow, um, you know Kelly's was pretty simple as far as routes to run and what you did on each play uh, because of the hurry up offense uh, element to it. There wasn't a lot of complicated play calls and that kind of thing. Uh, Peterson's offense, if it's like Reid's, um, there's a little more for the receivers to kind of do and know how to do. And there's more uh, precise route running is really important to that. Um, you, you know, the idea is that guys are running very precise routes and they should come open at a, in a particular order so that the quarterback knows, you know, I look left to right and, you know, the guy who lined up outside on the left should come open 
first, and if he's not coming open, then you start to move on to, to the next guys in the uh, arrangement who are supposed to come open. It's very precise that way. So, you know, it, it, it requires a little more time for receivers to kind of you know, get their timing down, uh, learn to run the routes really precisely and all that kind of thing. Um, that's why early on with Andy Reid, when we had guys like you know, Tarrant Small and Charles Johnson and then Todd Pinkston and James Thrash, they weren't the most, uh, you know, explosive receivers in the world, but they were all good at the, kind of running the offense in terms of the, the precision of it. Um, later on, they got T.O. and kind of showed what a really good receiver could do in that offense. So I'm not sure the Eagles have the T.O. guy uh, on the roster at this point, but they'll have at least enough moving parts and with some potential that somebody could emerge as a star here. Talking with NFL Nation reporter Phil Sheridan here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Josh Hennig filling in for Mike Gill. Uh, the Eagles yesterday signed Nolan Carroll, a guy who played 11 games last year before he got injured. And uh, seems to me, Phil, they got him on a bit of a discount deal thanks to that injury for uh, $2.36 million. Although with incentives, he could earn up to $3 million. But definitely considering the other players in the market and considering his talent level, they really, uh, they really were able to make a good out here. Yeah, it was bad luck for Nolan Carroll. They finally had a chance to you know, start with the Eagles. He uh, was here the first year uh, in 2014. Um, he started one game at the end of the year when they finally benched Bradley Fletcher. Probably should have made that move a lot earlier in the season. <laughs> they might have gone to the playoffs if they had. But, uh, you know, they, they finally got on the field a little bit. And they won the starting job, you know, in, in training camp this past year. And uh, he was, you know, he was solid. He wasn't great. Um, but he got hurt, you know, broke his. Uh, a fibula, lower leg down by the ankle, and it was actually listed as a broken ankle at first, but it was above the ankle, the actual break. So it's not the joint that's in jeopardy there. You know, it's just a bone healing, and he should be fine for OTAs and everything. Uh, he's you know, a solid player, but you know, I just have a piece that's going to close tomorrow. I'm kind of looking at this you know, situation with the defensive backs, and, you know, it's been a, a huge amount of turnover at that position in Philadelphia the last few years. And, you know, the assumption is that they just keep getting bad players. I think a lot of it may just be that the defensive system is, you know, has not really been uh, conducive to good secondary play. I think that if you look back to like you know, Juan Castillo being defensive coordinator, that was kind of a mess uh, for a couple of years there. You know, they had you know, guys like Namdi Asamoah and, and Dominique Rogers Camardi come through. Um, you know, guys like Nate Allen were here for a few years. Uh, safeties, um, you know, just a bunch of guys that come through here. And then you had the whole Terry Williams, Bradley Fletcher, you know, Byron Maxwell for a year now. I really think the defensive system was not very uh, friendly to defensive backs, let's say. Whereas Jim Schwartz's system is all about pressuring quarterbacks, uh, you know, not forcing uh, defensive backs to you know hold and stay in their coverage for a long period of time. You're trying to get the you know get to the quarterback, force quick throws, uh, you know, force mistakes, uh, create turnovers that way. Um, so the guys that they're bringing in, like the guys they brought from Buffalo, that played with Schwartz, uh, they all loved playing under him and love the way they you know got a chance to. You know, be aggressive and, and just sort of play naturally rather than sort of playing very, you know, rigidly and kind of in a, in a you know complicated system. They've had that here for a couple of years now, so I do think that um, you know the ability to come and, and you know, play in uh, Bill Davis' system and do well as Carroll did last year, he may have a chance to really be effective and, and show a little bit more of what his game can be with Jim Schwartz's defense, and that's probably what he was up for in terms of all these defensive backs. And they really need to kind of settle on some guys and keep them here for a while and let them grow together. And you look at that Seattle secondary that was so great when Byron Maxwell was there. I mean, Maxwell was a sixth-round pick. Uh, Cam Chancellor and Richard Sherman were both fifth-round picks. You know, um, Darrell Campbell was the only, uh, the only guy that was, you know, the whole, the whole secondary, the only guy was the, you know, was the first-round pick. They had all these guys who were fifth- and sixth-round picks. So getting guys who can play together and, and stay together and grow together is a big part of it. Eagles haven't really done that very well the last few years. Uh, the hope here is that they can do it and finally get that, that started with Jim Schwartz. Phil, I was reading your article from Monday. You are talking about Jim Schwartz, and some of the quotes of the players are interesting. You know, Leotis McKelvin said the system is not too complicated. You can just go out there and play ball. Nigel Bradham said that, you know, it really accentuates and really helps the players do what they do best. It seems to me that Jim Schwartz has gone from being just, oh, good, they hired a, a real defensive coordinator to just being a key to what the Eagles are going to do in 2016. Yeah, I really think so. You know, and uh, clearly Doug Pearson is, you know, kind of modeling what he does on the way Andy Reid has done things over the years. And, you know, Reid, he got to Philadelphia in 1999. He interviewed a couple of defensive coordinators. I think he tried to hire Marvin Lewis. Uh, it was one of the guys he talked to at that point. But he ended up getting Jim Johnson, who had, had been fired uh, a 
couple times, as all assistant coaches are, you know, you get fired when the head coach gets fired. And then it's spent a year in Seattle coaching linebackers and was basically thinking about whether he should retire or not. Uh, you know, Andy Reid hired him, and, uh, you know, for the next, you know, 10 years, basically, the Eagles defense was in the hands of Jim Johnson. Andy had some input. He certainly had a, a say in personnel decisions and everything. But he just turned it over to Jim Johnson. And I think that's what you're going to get with Doug Peterson here. He is going to make this, you know, Jim Schwartz is, is running the defense. He's not, you know, he's not just doing what uh, Doug Peterson wants to do on defense. It's his defense. And Schwartz has enough, uh, you know, experience and credentials to believe that he knows what he's doing and he's going to get a lot out of the guys that are here and the guys they bring in, in the future. And that's a very promising thing because, you know, the defense for the last three years was so handicapped by the way the offense ran the up-tempo thing. They were on the field more than any defense in the NFL for three years in a row. I mean, just a ludicrous amount of time uh, on the field forever. And, you know, players wore down as the season went on. There was a very, you know, uh, rigidly formatted defensive approach. Guys had to kind of, you know, plays very specific roles. Not a lot of freelancing there. It was all very you know, disciplined. And I think a guy that kind of turns players loose and lets them do what they do, um, the players will welcome that, and I think they'll reward him and reward, reward, reward the Eagles with a little bit of production and, and excitement, which is something the Philadelphia fans have, have always loved in, in the defense but have kind of lacked for the last few years. Let's talk about that offense real quick. We know Doug Peterson runs – we expect to be a West Coast style offense that's similar to what Andy Reid did because obviously he coached under Andy Reid he played for Andy Reid he also played for the Packers where Andy Reid came from talk for a minute about what we can expect from this offense from what we know about Kansas City and Doug Peterson yeah I think uh, you know the term West Coast offense you know goes way back to like Bill Walsh with the San Francisco 49ers in the 80s and, uh, you know, the, the gist of that was, you know, just sort of short passes, using the pass almost like a run, um, you know, with high, high percentage short passes, getting guys into space. And, uh, you know, sort of a, a system that kind of allowed, again, as I was saying earlier, kind of let the receivers come open in a certain, uh, certain order, a certain sequence on a given play. So the quarterback kind of knew exactly where to look and when, and the guy should be, you know, just hitting his, uh, his break and coming open. And the timing was a really important part of all that. And, you know, everybody, you know, as uh, Jim Schwartz himself said a couple couple weeks ago when he was introduced at the Eagles uh, complex, he said basically, you know, everybody uses some West Coast principles. I mean, there's not really West Coast offenses anymore like there were, you know, back in the day when, you know, Bill Walsh invented it and then Mike Holmgren took it to Green Bay and had success with it. And Andy Reid brought it to Philadelphia. I mean, as it's going on, you know, Andy Reid, changed it a lot when he was in Philadelphia. I mean, it started much more like a strict West Coast system. It evolved into a system that, you know, you saw Deshaun Jackson, you know, being used for deep throws that weren't really a natural part of the West Coast offense. So then you're going to see, you know, it's a combination of things that will use elements of that where short passing games are important, tight ends are, are really a big factor. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, you try not to, you try not to keep too many guys in the block. You try to, you try to, you know, block with, with five linemen and do the best you can to get as many guys out into, into you know, pass patterns as possible. Um, so there's a lot of that, that kind of principle involved. And, you know, Doug really is a believer in running the ball and sticking with the running game. Uh, Andy obviously had some problems with that when he was in Philadelphia. But, uh, you know, a belief in running the ball and you know, taking some pressure off your quarterback, and also, but also having an offense that's very, you know, uh, it's, it's a little more intricate in terms of terminology and what everybody has to do on a given play. Uh, your assignments are a little more complicated than they were in Chip Kelly's offense. But when it's all going well and it's all running right and the quarterback knows exactly what's, you know, where the throws need to be and who's going to be over on a given play, when it, when it runs really well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a very effective and efficient NFL offense. So I think that's what they're working toward. Now, whether they can do that with uh, you know, guys who've been playing for Chip Kelly for three years or for you know, one year in the case of Sam Bradford, you know, whether they can do that uh, in, in the space of a year, that'll be interesting to watch. But a lot of these guys that are coming in, or guys that have, you know, even, even a guy like Bradford, they have West Coast offense experience in their backgrounds because everybody in the NFL runs some version of West Coast concepts and, you know, West Coast style plays. So um, they're not going to bring a lot of guys who haven't seen the, you know, would be totally new to this, it would be totally foreign to them. So it should be a relatively smooth transition. But uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly, you know, which, one thing Andrew Reid always said, you know, the offense is what it is, but everybody, whether it's the quarterback or the coach uh, involved, it kind of puts his own uh, sort of spin on it 
and uh, you, know, you can kind of uh, personalize based on your quarterback's abilities, based on the coach's preferences. So we, we don't know until we see what Doug Peterson wants to do, what that'll look like. It'll be interesting to see that uh, as we first see it unfold on the field this year. That's NFL ESPN NFL Nation reporter Phil Sheridan. You can follow him at Sheridan Scribe. Phil, appreciate you joining us today. Talk some Eagles. And I hope you get to enjoy the week as we have basically compressed our show into three days because of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I hear you, Josh. Appreciate it. Take care. Have a good one.